Today is November 20th, and this is the meeting of governance, organization, and legislation. I'm calling this meeting to order at what looks like 10.36 a.m., and we are being recorded by Amherst Media. Um, there are three members of the committee present, so we have a quorum. Two members uh, today are absent. So, fellow committee members, you have in front of you the agenda for today's meeting, and a um, major item is to review council committee charges. Um, we also have our calendar that we can look at if we have time, and a couple of other items here, including some business not anticipated. So, my thought was to uh, begin uh, with the council committee charges, and I don't expect us to get through all of them. Hopefully we'll get through at least one. Um, and I was gonna suggest, uh, I don't have an order here, but I was gonna suggest we start perhaps with uh, CRC, um, but I'm open to any suggestions from my colleagues. Um, I was, yes, <laughs> which may be start with something else. Um, well, uh, that's, that was one thought. Um, but uh, so, how do you feel? We can start with that. We just had the discussion. You just had the discussion, so you feel like you're ready to uh, to tack that, take that on. Um, finance, I think we're going to have to hold off on. I've spoken to Andy, I haven't heard back. Um, obviously, this committee, I mean, we could begin with GOL if, that, if people want to get warmed up. <laughs> okay, so we're going to begin with CR CRC, and so um, I'm going to try and open CRC, and Being the coward that I am, I'm going to uh, turn to Mandy when she's ready and um, have her lead us through this, if she's willing. So, um, as chair of the CRC, about half an hour ago, um, we had a discussion about the CRC charge. <laughs> Very good. And I took notes, so I will just read some of the, the notes um, and then we can continue a discussion here about those notes. Um, I, I first wanna do the, one of the easy ones, which is the size. There had been rumblings and, and discussion earlier on about potentially CRC wanting to increase its size and all, um, and they have to me indicated there is no desire to increase the size beyond five members at this point. So I thought I'd just at least mention that um, so that we can sort of dispense with potentially that issue unless people think differently. Um, but now to get into sort of the bulk of the discussion, which was the charge itself, the purpose and the charge. Uh, CRC members are not uniform in their thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and, and because the discussion happened about a half an hour ago, I will read my notes, which kind of just run all over the place, okay. um, instead of coming up with a nice, succinct um, summary of it. Um, but, you know. Well, one option, Andy, uh, may I inter interrupt, um, is for you to just, we can pass on this and no. give you a chance to, no, okay. Uh, uh, there, okay. There's, there's, there were two main points of the discussion, okay, um, but, but my notes are kind of all over the place on them. I'll try to sort of sure, put them there. Yeah. The first one was actually about item A, bullet point, I guess it's four, the policies regarding the relationship between the town and the Amherst Institutions of Higher Education. Right. We noted that we haven't really, as CRC, done anything with anything related to that at mm -hmm. this point, so mm -hmm. it's kind of been a section of the charge that has been non-used that doesn't mean it doesn't, isn't important, but at least from, we haven't been seeing stuff. Um, but that, 
one member thought, well, maybe, at least one member thought, well, maybe we don't need it in our charge. It's kind of an outlier to the rest of what the charge deals with. Um, another thought that, well, it's a very important thing to have in a charge um, somewhere, but maybe it doesn't need to be in CRCs, but they would hate to see it disappear from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so then another member said, well, maybe it could be transferred somewhere um, in thinking about what a discussion about something like this might look like. Um, the relationship might better fall within GOL's purview of governance, talking about town sort of mm -hmm. organization, not more organization and all, and a lot of the things, especially as it relates to maybe the strategic partnership agreement, mm -hmm. better potentially falls within maybe GOL versus CRC um, as a potential way to move it somewhere. Um, one member said the strategic partnership agreement probably doesn't belong within CRC, but the impacts of higher ed planning, the impacts of students on neighborhoods, that part does. Mm -hmm. So how you word that in a charge is something different, but it might not need to specifically mention higher ed per se versus impacts of that versus mm -hmm. the relationship between the two. So that was one of our big discussions was that particular bullet point. Um, one thing I would recommend when I was looking at this myself was it relates a lot, it refers a lot to policies. We should maybe change that to measures um, mm -hmm. as the generic, so it, it's more generic. Um, but then there was talk about just sort of the comprehensiveness of this charge. And one member believed that you can't separate them out into separate committees because they need to be discussed in the same committees. When you're talking about economic development or parking or planning or land use or housing, you can't do it in a silo, that they all relate to each other, they all do that, and so you have to have those discussions not in different committees. Um, another member mentioned that item A is matters referred, so even though the there's a lot being referred. The, the CRC is not creating the process for those policies, aren't creating the policies. We're, the CRC is taking the ownership of the time to think through something that has been proposed to the council. And when you think of it from that perspective, it's a little less daunting. Then another member pointed out, but section D does allow the committee to offer policy and make recommendations within its purview. And so the two together make it daunting and if you want the committee to be a proactive committee along with a reactive one, this charge might be too comprehensive um, versus if you only want it to be a reactive committee responding to someone else's policy proposals. Um, one member thought, well, in the future we might get time to deal with D, but it's not as important. Another one said, maybe the discussion then at GOL needs to be around section D, not section A, and how to in um, how to allow all committees to be sort of proactive committees, not just reactive committees. Um, then one member said, well, how do you split D out of A? If D is proactive, they should, a committee should only be creating proactive recommendations on stuff within its purview. If you haven't limited the purview in A, how do you, get to D, um, you know, maybe, you know, and so then the, then the discussion went on to GOL's problem is that how do you limit those two together to create a body that, or multiple bodies and a town council that can be both proactive and reactive in a manner that um, <clears throat> is, does not overtax and overburden the already overtaxed and overburdened counselors anymore because you don't want to necessarily create yet another standing committee. So, and, and as, as that member eloquently said, so that's GOL's problem, not CRC's problem to figure out. <laughs> um, but, but so those were sort of the, the main discussions were there, were there were some members that thought the charge is too broad, others that thought you can't separate out the specific areas that have already been included in it, but then there's concern that not separating them out does not allow for any proactive 
identification of problems and attempt to solve or propose policies that might solve those problems on our own as a legislature. Any thoughts, Evan? <laughs> and you're free not to have any, um, but do you have any thoughts? This has always been a really tough charge because I agree that it's overly comprehensive and I also agree that you can't really separate some of these things out. And so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, the council, you know, one, of my, one of my, I guess, core process beliefs is that every measure with some rare exceptions that comes to the council should be referred to a committee to then advise on council action mm -hmm. on that measure. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at this and so planning, zoning, land use all comes before the council, public ways, housing, homelessness, all these issues come before the council. And so in my mind, we need some committee that, that can advise on these. Um, that said, just as Mandy Joe said, how do you separate this out because uh, you know uh, George and I recently sat in on a meeting that discussed economic development that almost exclusively focused on zoning in many ways mm -hmm. so you have to keep those together housing is also so tied to our local economy How, you can't separate these out mm -hmm. and I also don't want to create a sixth standing committee of this council, especially if these committees continue. I know one of our absent members today um, has been really pushing the idea that the council committee should meet once a month. Um, and I think there is actually some merit to that. I don't know how we do that. Um, hmm. But I, I, do, I do think, I was having a conversation um, with Councillor Pam last night, and she asked, why is, the, why is this so much harder than it was for the select board? And I, I told her about a conversation I had with Councillor Brewer, who said the select board met as often as the council, and often for as long as the council, but there were no select board committees. They were liaisons, and sometimes they went, sometimes they didn't. But what's, what's crushing many councillors is not the council, it's the committees. And so to create an additional standing committee to deal with some of these, it seems unwise. So I actually, I don't know what to do here because it feels like at least recently, every meeting of the council, we go, refer to CRC, refer to CRC, right? And, and mm -hmm. I feel so thankful I'm not on CRC in some mm -hmm. of those moments. Mm -hmm because mm -hmm. I don't know how CRC can do it. Um, and luckily they have an, an incredibly competent chair mm -hmm. to help them navigate it and they mm -hmm. have very uh, smart members, but um, it, you know, if we had referred the climate goals to them at that meeting, that would have been 90 days, they'd have less actually, because the council had to act in 90 days um, on top of the parking that we would have referred to them during that. I mean, it just doesn't, there's so much. And mm -hmm. so I don't think this is a manageable charge for CRC, but I don't know how to fix that. Mm -hmm. So George, I'm looking to you for the solution. Um, well, there's first of all, just a process question for us. When we get the comments back from the various chairs and committees, what are we supposed to do with it? I mean, uh, we listen to it, we note it down. Um, then we're going to revise this, make changes, or are we going to just, um, I mean, uh, we make changes and uh, then we, s what happens then? I mean, what, how does CRC or any committee then weigh in and say, wait a minute, that's not what we want. That's not, uh, you know, does that come out at the council uh, at a meeting where they say, you know, they look at what we've done and they say, whoa, no, 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 this is terrible. Um, I'm just, it's a process question. Mandy, what's your thought? So I, I think that initial process is to hear from 
the chairs of right. as many of the committees as we can before we get into what would a modification of, say, a CRC right. charge look like, because I think that is also dependent upon what the modification of maybe an OCA charge or a more particularly a GOL charge might look like, um, or what we do with audit. Do we need a separate audit committee? Um, not that getting rid of that one would allow us to put one in its place because audit meets three times a year, yeah. so those would be totally different commitments. But um, you know, I, I think it's good to hear what each committee is thinking about its charge, but then I think we, have, we can't discuss them in isolation. They need discussed as a group after that whether we present it to the full council first or whether we send individual revisions or the package back to each of the committees for discussion, that I think is up to the chair with maybe the advice of the rest of this committee um, as to what that might look like. I do think it would have to be a package to the council in the end. Um, you know, so one, once we come up with potential changes to the charges, I think what George was asking was what do we do with them? Do they go back to the individual committees for advice um, and thought before they head to the council or not? Um, I think whatever goes to the council needs to be a package where we can't just say, here's what we recommend be done to the GOL charge in isolation from what might be recommended to the CRC charge. I think it needs to be a package of we've looked at everything and here's our comprehensive changes. But how to get to that, I, I don't know what the right process is. Okay, I have a issue here that I need your, your thoughts on, both of you. Um, because it, in my thinking, we don't touch these um, unless a committee comes to us and says, we want to change our charge and here's what we've done. Then we look at it to make sure that, you know, it, it's, you know, okay. But the idea of us actually altering a charge of the committee um, with or without the committee's input makes me nervous. It seems to me that it's the committee that should sit down and decide whether they're happy with their charge or not. Because the charge exists, here it is. and. Um, you know, we've asked them to review them. You have done that. Um, other committees will do that, hopefully. Um, and they come back to us with some changes, then we look at that. Um, but if they don't, or if they don't look at them, I'm nervous, and here I need to hear from both of you. I I'm not happy or nervous about the idea of us tinkering with these charges. Um, and then uh, whoever we send it to, um, the committee's gonna go, wait a minute, you know? Um, that's not what I meant, that's not what I said. So can I hear from the two of you on that? I mean, I just have a question of process and, and our role in this. I'm, a li I'm just not comfortable with us tinkering with charges of other committees. Um, with, I think it should come, I guess in simple language, it should come from them. So clearly uh, there's some disagreement here, so I need to get some clarity. Um, that's my view at the moment. I'm glad to change it, but I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of what the two of you think about that. Either one of you. So I always appreciate your conservative approach to yeah. some of these issues, um, mostly because I'm usually on the other side, which I am. Um, I and so my thought is, you know, it's within our charge that we advise on the organization of, of the council. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of that, one of the annual things the council has to decide is which committee should it have, what should they do, and uh, who should be on them. Mm -hmm. Now that last one is a decision of the president and the president alone. But in my mind, those first two are really GOL. Uh, they're not decisions, they're decisions of the full council as opposed to the president, and GOL's role is to advise on those two decisions. Mm -hmm. And so um, in the beginning, really uh, four of our five committees were, the president came up with them. Mm -hmm. um, but now I think that role rests in GOL to say what does the organization of our council look like with regard to its committee structures, what should they do? Um, and so we have some committees and I think it's GOL's job now to advise on the, to the council, do we need them? Are these the ones we should have? And are these what they should be doing? And I think it makes sense for us to get feedback from the members of each committee 
but I, I don't necessarily think that the members of the committee um, should have complete control over that because um, mm -hmm. we're, our role, the, how do I say this? The members of the committee are one, viewing it in terms of our committee. Mm -hmm. But our role is to take the 30,000 foot view and say, this committee in the context of the, of the work of the council and all of the other committees. And that perspective, that lens is very different than the lens of a member sitting in the committee doing the committee's work. Um, because they're looking at their own actions within a committee and we're looking at the committees as sort of a council ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The second thing is I think that there, and I, and I certainly this is going to be the case in one of the committees that I serve on, that I think committees can be very protective of some aspects of their charge, sure. even if the council may feel as though um, that, that aspect of it should be changed. And so to give complete deference to a committee, um, I think puts too much power in that committee mm -hmm. of, what the, of what it will do. Ultimately, all of this is a full council decision. Right. Um, and I think we're looking for input from the committees, but I think that the council is looking to us to advise on their overall organization. Okay. That's all right. And I'll Mandy. just say ditto, yeah. because I was gonna say pretty much all of that. So I think our role is to advise the council, which would include potentially coming up with revised charges or even mm. a new charge for a new committee potentially. So I think it's completely within our advise the council on council organization to modify Char or re recommend modifications to charges. And if I had to throw out sort of my idealized process that I thought about for all of five minutes now, right. um, I'd probably say we solicit, we get feedback from the committees. We make some recommended revisions to the charge. We send it back to the committee and say, here's what we're recommending. Do you have feedback? And if they come back and go, oh yeah, that makes sense. We go, all right, great. And if they come back and they go, no, then we have a harder decision to make yeah. about are we still going to recommend this over the objections of the committee? Because maybe the, uh, the council problem, uh, first of all, the, each committee except for audit has five members, and so that's almost to the seven votes, right? And so mm. we don't want to put something contentious in front of the council that we don't think will pass the council. Um, but I think then that's a conversation, right? Um, but I think there's still something to be said about uh, and again, I can think of at least one instance where we will likely recommend a revision to a charge that the committee will absolutely reject, but I think that the council will probably support, and we would have to have a conversation of, are we still gonna recommend this to the council even though the committee doesn't like it? Mm -hmm. Because we're not here to please the committee, we're here to look at how can these committees best serve the council. So my thought is, we get feedback, we make revisions, we run those by, by the committee, see what they think, but then ultimately, we're the ones who are deciding what to send to the council. Mm. All right. I'm not yet convinced, but um, that's okay. I, I'm just, let's look at this concretely. My initial thought is, okay, um, let's take out policies under A and just make it measures. Measures, measures, measures. That seems to me, um, but again, that's just a, a tiny little change, and we'll see what the rest of you think. But other than that, um, I wouldn't want to touch this, um, but I'd rather turn the conversation to, and I think we have already, in some sense, said, okay, how could you break this apart? And the answer is, we can't think of any way to do that. Um, so I don't think at the moment I'm hearing any kind of suggestion as to you know, how to take this and break it into other you know, bodies or committees or whatever. Um, and so, uh, and if we start tinkering with the particulars, um, things fall out, and we don't really have a clear sense of where they would go um, at the moment, though we certainly can talk about that. We could identify three or four particular things we'd like to take out um, and then discuss where we think they should go. But what I'm hearing is that um, this is uh, much too much, and yet there doesn't seem to be any, at the moment, practical way to, uh, to redesign this. Um, we have created now a new, a new mechanism, the ad hoc committee, and so one thought I have is that, okay, when you have something that goes, something goes to CRC, um, they consider creating ad hoc committees. 
um, to, to deal with it, and that, that could give them some flexibility, blah, blah, blah. But um, short of, I mean, again, open it up for discussion. What, what are some concrete alternatives anyone has, because I have none at the moment, to what we could do to restructure or reorganize this committee, breaking it into some kind of smaller units or taking something specific out and giving it to somebody else or just taking it out and letting it just, you know, lie fallow and just, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, any thoughts on that? Mandy. So I don't have tremendous amounts of concrete thoughts right now. One of my thoughts is that bullet point four relating to the town and Amherst institutions can be moved to potentially GOL. Um, mm -hmm. re reworded, but something moved there, and some sort of rewording to add neighborhoods or impact measures that impact neighborhoods or something. But that's that's still planning zoning. It's kind of already there. Right. Um, so anything, say, UMass might do in construction already kind of, if there's something for the town to do, falls within the current CRC charge. Um, so even if you remove bullet point four and the removal of bullet, bullet point four, which isn't really related to, when I read it, it's more related to the relationship, which looks towards, in some sense, the strategic partnership agreement right. portion versus what they're doing on their campus that affects the, t you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's sort of two issues. And so I, I think that one could be moved to GOL. Um, so speaking as CRC chair, we have six referrals in front of us right now. Mm -hmm. um, we had seven until Monday when I, we finished with one and formally sent it back to the council. Um, we almost had a seventh on Monday. Mm -hmm. And um, two of the referrals sitting in front of us are the master plan and the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. um, for revisions. Not that we're looking at the whole zoning bylaw right now, but, but those are, sitting in front of us. Um, housing priorities plan will probably come back to us in a couple months. Mm -hmm. We've got multi at least one transportation issue in front of us. It looks like given the discussion on Monday night, we might have a whole lot more coming to us in a right. couple mm -hmm. weeks. We've got the downtown parking plan mm -hmm. study in front of us in its entirety. Mm -hmm. um, that from, from my chair point of view, when I look at trying to set future agendas, I go, how am I ever going to get to some of this no, in sure. a month Absolutely. and a half, Absolutely. let alone yeah. in, in a good discussion? I can put four of them on an agenda, but 20 minutes for each item, 30, you know, 25 minutes on each item is not enough. Um, and so how long can I, can it get drug out before the council's like, what are you doing? Or how, how mm -hmm. much till I have to say we need to meet weekly? Um, as chair, I am vitally concerned in a way that I wasn't when I chaired GOL about getting the referral work from the council done. Um, and I will say at the prior meeting, some of these things I said about how do you split it out, I don't see a way for CRC to be proactive on any policy recommendations at all. And maybe that's okay if that's what the council wants. If the council wants CRC solely doing responses to measures that came in front of the council and making recommendations and discussing um, policies solely on things that the council has been presented, then this charge might be manageable. But if the council actually expects CRC at some point to be able to offer its own recommendations on issues or matters that it sees as problems in town mm -hmm. that haven't been created policy-wise or measure-wise by some other entity, whether it be another committee or the executive, I, there's n I don't believe there's a way CRC can do both right now. So one of them has to give if, you know, and, and that's an expectation, is the council expecting CRC to come in with its own policy proposals or measure proposals? Maybe not. But if, if CRC at some point says, we've got a problem with parking, talk about it, given all the referrals that come from other ways, there's no time in the agenda to do that right now. At the same time, I don't know what to, how to split. There's been talk of splitting it between anything related to the master plan and then not, but when you look at what the master plan includes, it includes facilities. So you can't split the works of DPW or the workings of public safety out if you're going to measure it by master plan or not. 
maybe you could take specific portions of the master plan and say the master plan falls there, but items related to or measures related to facilities or to public safety or to this particular thing fall into another committee. I, or maybe it's zoning and bylaws and everything else. I, it, there, I'm not sure there's a good way, as Evan said, to split. So and I think that's where we have to have the discussion. But if we want a proactive committee on measure proposals, that there's no time right now in CRC to ever do that. Right. So, sure, go ahead. And so I, I agree. And this is where I'm. So you just listed off your current referrals. And to me, done well and meeting twice a month, that's a year at least, right? I mean, some of those, like the master plan, are really hefty. Some of those are contentious issues like parking. I mean, right, and I said this publicly in the meeting on Monday. I want you all to take those three recommendations. I want you to seriously consider their viability whether we should recommend them. And then if you like one of them, I'd actually like to see the committee turn one of those into a proposal that can be put in front of the council to vote on. That's like three months of work at least, right? Because it involves talking to the public, it involves perhaps bringing members of the DPWG, it involves talking to the, it involves bringing the town manager, it involves liaison with um, finance, considering that one of them would involve an appropriation for a new staff member. And so I think what you said is, doing them well, right? And, and that's my concern in a lot of ways. And I think one, no one watches these videos. One of the areas where we saw this bite CRC in the butt was when CRC considered CPA recommendations in the spring. Now granted that was because CRC was, it was like their second meeting, it was very right. new. Just, right. But to some extent there was a, yeah, these look good and then it, kind of blew up with regard to one of those proposed projects. And my thought is, okay, so CRC is probably gonna be asked to review CPA recommendations again because they relate to the things in these charts. What does actually reviewing those mean? And it probably is at least a full meeting, maybe two, depending on what's up there. When you start to add all this up, CRC in my mind, with all due respect to all of the members of CRC, will end up slowing the council down. Because if we want CRC to really consider parking, the, or the parking recommendations, but they also have potential parking on Lincoln in front of them, and we also said that they have to get back to us on speed limit, I mean, we do all of these things. Mm -hmm. we're, in my mind, we either don't get things for a very long time, and we can't act on them until we get them, right. or, we have very sort of rushed discussions in CRC. And so I, I, I look at this and I say, I don't know how you break this up, but I, I don't really think CRC can effectively serve as the committee that we intended it to with this workload. Um, and I don't, and I think at some point there's a conversation of expanding the membership, which CRC doesn't want, but I still think even that wouldn't solve the problem because just adding more bodies doesn't work. So, so why, can't, why can't you use the ad hoc committee structure? Why can't we begin to think about um, take, calling on other council members to serve on some kind of ad hoc body and also reaching out to the public and getting, uh, and just uh, carving out and say, okay, this group go off and work on X, this group go off and work on Y. And, and I realize the workload, but the workload is there no matter how you cut it. Um, there are only 13 of us, and um, uh, if we are going to be involved in these, uh, in forming these policies, and CRC is going to be taking the leadership in them, um, are they comfortable or open to the idea of using the new ad hoc committee structure, or is that, uh, what sort of structure, system are you going to use when you have to break off these tasks? So you want someone to look at the parking situation. Uh, the, the, you know, for instance, or you want someone to look at the group to look at the master plan. Is it just that there's just too much no matter how you organize this? Or is there some way we can begin to think of using the ad hoc committee uh, structure or something like it 
um, to begin to, to break, carve off some of these things and also bring in other counselors. So you turn to someone who's not on CRC and, and you say, uh, would you do this? And you reach out to one, you get a staff member, you get a uh, counselor and you get uh, uh, one or two town people and you send them off. Is, is that an option? So, I mean, I've said, I've indicated my non-love of ad hoc committees many times in this, in this council. In the, yeah, so I don't, I, I guess I fall from a structural point of view a couple of ways. One, our standing committees should present similar workloads as best as possible so that people are choosing potentially committees that they want to be on because they want to be on the committee, not because it's the only committee workload they can handle. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can find a way to even that out, and, and right now the way of it's evening out in a sense is everyone's meeting every other week, and CRC, as Evan said, will just be slow in responding to, in making its recommendations to the council because I don't want to have to have CRC meet weekly in order to speed up that process. Um, I don't think that's um, a viable strategy for mm -hmm. making sure. a counselor position doable in this town. Um, I also don't believe if you're going to have a standing committee that is said to recommend policy that the expectation should be that that standing committee hands off regular review of policy recommendations to ad hoc committees. Um, that doesn't mean that CRC will not recommend ad hoc committees. I have potentially come around to the fact that the working group or whatever we want to call it for the percent for art bylaw is helping. Um, and might have been the way to go. Um, and I could potentially see some working groups in parking to work out some specific policies, but not to make the recommendation on whether those policies are good or bad or what the impacts of those policies are on the town. Um, I think it's best to have if you're to have a consistent way to evaluate impacts, benefits, drawbacks, um, achievability of potential, you know, if you're looking at a goal policy, achievability, timeliness, all of that, you know, have a consistent way of evaluating all of that and presenting that to the council. And the council should be able to expect that consistency. That consistency might be different per committee, but it should be able to expect that consistency from a specific committee. If you then say to that committee, well, we know you're not gonna be able to do all your work, so start recommending ad hoc committees to do it, you lose some of the benefit of consistency of a committee being able to look long-term and delve into those issues and be able to look back on things because now you've got a whole different group making that recommendation. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but I don't think it supports efficiency in getting things back to the council in a comprehensive and timely manner. You're talking about evening out the workload, right? In that, a way. Yeah, yeah, right. And you're basically talking about four committees that exist because audit, right, they're not going to, right? You're not, what are you going to give audit? Nothing. <laughs> Um, so uh, it, we're back to the issue of GOL, um, and maybe we should turn to that. I think we've been at this for 45 minutes, um, and I'm, I don't expect us to get through all of these, and, um, but I'd like us to get through at least one, uh, or at least get clear on what we're trying to accomplish, um, which we've had a good discussion so far. Um, I think there's some uh, difference a little bit about uh, what we're actually trying to accomplish. Um, I'm not completely persuaded by uh, the two of you that that we should be doing these kinds of, of revisions and then if the committee doesn't like it, well, we're still gonna take it to the council. But I'm still, I'm not made of my mind on that and we also are missing two uh, committee members and I think it'd be useful to hear uh, their thoughts on this. Um, 
But what I'm struggling with, I guess, and I, maybe Evan, you can weigh in here, is that, okay, if you want to even out the workload, you're basically talking about expanding GOL's charge. And we've had this discussion before, and so maybe we should turn to that. Maybe we should turn to GOL and leave this for the moment. Um, obviously, uh, Mandy's just had her committee talk about it. She's still processing it. Um, we, we can come back to it again in our next meeting. Um, but I guess two thoughts. One, uh, give me some I help here with this idea of, of, of evening out the workload. If that doesn't involve the creation of some kind of ad hoc type committees to, to take on some of these tasks and involving other people other than the members of CRC, and instead it means sharing the load with other existing committees, because uh, I don't hear any real strong feeling for creating a new committee, but that's always an option. Um, you're really talking about four committees, and finance is certainly not appropriate, um, and OCA is not appropriate, it doesn't seem to me, so it just leaves GOL. And I have always resisted that myself, but I'm still, I'm not, you know, I'm not set in stone. But um, I this idea of evening out the workload, what, what do you think? I mean, <laughs> if it's not ad hoc committees, um, what do we do? So I haven't fully thought any of this yeah, fine. through, you right? I mean, you don't I, have to answer. I, I mean, you know, okay. my, I, just, I share Mandy Joe's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Icy feelings towards ad hoc committees. It's um, what we've created. I mean, and, 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 and I know, and I think to me, to call me, so what you want. I per, what you percent for them. art. Well, so here's the thing for me, percent for art made sense actually as something else because it didn't appropriately belong in one of the bodies. And so to me, the ad hoc committee should really be created when we have a measure that doesn't nicely fit into some existing structure. So I actually, maybe, I, I certainly the climate goals or some things that come forward in the future for climate, those even might fall into an ad hoc committee because they're kind of finance, but they're kind of um, um, CRC, but in, in some ways they might also be something completely different. And so those are the type of reasons I think we want to have ad hoc committees. I, I don't like the idea of creating ad hoc committees because we have a committee whose workload is overwhelming. To me, that's not a, a reason to do it. It's, it's, it's special circumstances because I do think that they increase their workload. And for me, I mean, w one, of, one of the issues that I think is, is difficult is not just the time commitment, but predictability. And so right now, I serve on five committees, mm -hmm. if you want to include the steering, which just wrapped up, thankfully the steering group so for the capital four. projects. So no, now it's four. It's only four. But, but for the past few months, it's been five. GOL and OCA, no problem. Because I know when they are, I have some idea. Um, ECAC, no, I mean, has its own problems, but no problem, right, because of that. Bylaw review has been all over the place as we've been trying to finish up, and the steering committee has been sort of all over the place. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's that sort of unpredictability of meeting when you can meet and not having that regular consistent schedule that that's, to me actually makes things more challenging. And so I don't think the ad hoc committees are a good solution. So you're right, what do we do? Do we, yeah, and, and I think, you know, I think that maybe there's something to be said about maybe you do create another standing committee and compensate in other ways. You know, we've had conversations in the past about GOL maybe going down to three members um, we haven't necessarily done that. We are often three members, yes, um, right. and we seem right. to work just fine that way. Mm. But and so so maybe that's maybe maybe there's a everyone is so reticent to create or so hesitant to create a, another standing committee, um, and I share that. But there also might be ways to reduce workload elsewhere, or maybe even CRC. If you split it into two committees, you reduce the size of each, right? So they're not two five-person committees. So I, I think that there are probably uh, alternative solutions here um, to think about how we can move forward as a council. Um, the other thing, the other option is we could pull some things from CRC's charge and just say, when those things do come to the council, we do create an ad hoc committee for them instead of CRC creating an ad hoc committee. I, I think that there's, there's probably 
we haven't spent a whole lot of time thinking about this, but there's probably some innovative ways we can actually approach this. Um, well, that, that's an interesting suggestion, that that at least would, would be something we could actually come back to the council and to the committee and say, okay, we're thinking, we're suggesting take out X, Y, and Z, and when those matters come before the council, um, we would create some kind of ad hoc committee to deal with them. So if we talk about that for a moment, what might be um, areas uh, that could be taken out um, that uh, CRC might be willing to let go? Um, and again, just throwing it out there. Um, would it be housing? Would it be um, uh, zoning? Would it be master plan? Um, what's the core community resources? I would think economic development, art and culture, I know one member of that committee would never let that go. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't take it out. Um, but uh, it would seem that the, the, the second bullet point under purpose would be sort of core. Um, I don't know, thoughts on that? I mean, that's a suggestion at least. Evan suggests let's take out a couple of these things to lessen the, the workload burden and, and people say, well, then what do we do? Well, when they come before the council, uh, issues, say, dealing with the master plan or issues dealing with, say, zoning or planning, um, we create an ad hoc committee. Mandy. So I would have actually said bullet point number two, community and economic development, including art and culture, in any... W would come out. Would come out. Okay. Um, All right. Potentially, though, with the recommendation to create a town committee on economic community and economic development okay. that would include all art and culture or downtown okay. development or economic vibrancy okay. or something like that. Um, so in the end, I think we need to decide what do we want CRC, what should CRC be discussing when something is referred to it for recommendations? And I have a couple of things. So like, or what, you know, I don't think it's necessarily what it talks about when it makes a recommendation versus what should be in front of it for making a recommendation. And maybe that's the way to look at it. Um, if a zoning bylaw is proposed, it makes sense to go to Community Resources Committee for making recommendations on whether to Right, you know, recommendations on passage or not, approval or not of that zoning bylaw. Um, when the master plan comes, it makes sense to make the recommendations. When it's making that recommendation, CRC can discuss a whole lot of things except maybe finance because we know that'll be covered potentially if it's been referred to finance, finance. But if it hasn't, maybe it discusses finance. But it can discuss economic development, how that proposal would relate to economic development. It can discuss how it would relate to arts and culture. It can discuss how it would relate to housing. Um, it doesn't have to be limited necessarily in what it evaluates and how it evaluates that proposal. It's just what proposal and what measure is coming. One way to think about this is percent for art that is coming. If we moved economic development, art and culture out and put it potentially to GOL, the discussions in the committees can encompass all sorts of things. It's just which committee has that discussion. Um, you know, CRC would discuss it in light of potentially not finance because it's sitting in finance. At this point, it would discuss it in light of, um, you know, is, is it going to aid economic development? Is it going to aid the master plan? Is it going to aid, um, you, know, you know, downtown vibrancy or what's its effect on housing or this, you know, you can have that comprehensive discussion, but does that need to be in CRC? Or because it's a general bylaw, could it be in GOL still to have that same comprehensive discussion, but sitting in a different committee? Um, so could it be a split of policies plus zoning bylaw changes are CRC, general bylaw changes are some other committee, and this is just random thought in terms of how you might split this, or policies from these committees or directly affecting these items, housing or planning or zoning here, policies directly affecting whatever, arts and cultures, facilities, public safety, public transportation, or just the public way, say, in this committee, 
the discussion in the committee can be comprehensive and encompass some other committee's sort of initial charge. It's just where are we sending, what committee is best to have that discussion? I don't know whether that's helpful at all, but. Evan? Go ahead, that's right, We're, we'll pause for a moment. We'll pause for a moment. Um, and I, oh, we're back. Um, we're still on the item related to CRC. We've been at it for an hour. Um, I, I would like to put a stop to it, but um, yes, Evan. So I know, that <laughs> I know your intention um, perhaps was to sort of pick off a committee at a time or something. Right. Um, but I actually kind of like the fact that we've been talking a little bit more holistically about the different councils and the distribution of workload, because I think that's actually what our job is to do. Mm -hmm. And so as I was washing my hands, I was thinking about the fact that OCO right now has actually been fairly busy because it's been coming up with a new town council appointment process. Absent that task, OCO would not have been very busy. Um, so in theory, we get, um, let's say that we come up with an appointment process that the council loves and the public loves and everyone just loves, and we say, okay, this is what we're gonna do going forward. OCA's role then primarily becomes reviewing the town manager appointments, which have been coming to us in big groupings in part because there's a lot of catch up to be played right now, but also there's 30 days, so um, they, we don't often feel a whole lot of pressure. To, like if we got a set of appointments right now, I would probably put them on the December 16th or December 9th OCA agenda. They don't need to like go on the next one. And in theory, we shouldn't have that often planning board ZBA and finance committee vacancies in theory, right. but if we do, once we have a process in place, that's like two meetings of OCA uh, under the process that we seem likely to adopt at our next meeting. The outreach part of OCA, we have an outreach subcommittee that's worked on, hasn't done no. too much. Right. It, we well, we actually much. do look at the OCA charge. There's something about supporting counselors in district meetings and stuff like that, and OCA hasn't done anything with that. And I don't necessarily know what OCA would do with that. Like, how are we here to support um, counselors in district meetings? It seems like counselors have been relying on the CPOs a whole lot, but I'm not quite, and, and staff, but what does OCA actually provide in that context? And then there's also something about working with the CPOs and working with the RAC without any real discussion of what we're supposed to be doing. But I think even absent those things, we do it on occasion, but infrequently. And so yeah. I, I actually think that in a, in, I'm hesitant to say this, so let's keep it between us. Got me to hit the pause. <laughs> but it, well, no one watches this. Um, but in normal times, right, when we're not playing catch up on committee appointments, when we're not having to revise an entire process, I actually think the workload for OCA will likely be the lightest of any town council committee. Um, and, and certainly significantly lighter than CRC. And so if we're thinking about evening out workload, and we're, I don't necessarily think the conversation necessarily naturally leads to GOL, I do think we have to take a look at OCA. And one of the things I'm thinking is could OCA be reconfigured to be something different? So I'm looking at, I've, as we've been talking, I've been sort of casually perusing what some of our neighboring communities have for committees, right? Yes. And uh, God, East Hampton has a ton, but they only have three people to, per committee. Right. So like they have, I'm gonna read these because it's, it's sort of fun to just read a committee on mayoral communications, which is a council committee, a committee on public safety, a committee on rules and government relations, a finance committee, a committee of ordinate, uh, the ordinance committee, the appointments committee, the property committee. So they have a whole lot more committees than us, but again, they only have three people per committee. And it's a 13 member council, correct? Is that true? I, I believe so. 
I believe it's so nine, nine members. Nine. So they have more committees than us, fewer members, but they do have fewer members per committee. And I also don't know how often these meet. And so there's, there's lots of different ways to sort of reconfigure these. But the reality is that OCA has become the appointments committee, right? In theory, outreach and communications is in the charge, but it has become sort of the appointments. But I, I think, Evan, I hate to interrupt, but I, I, think, I, I think that the reason for that is because of circumstance, and that in the best of all possible worlds, if we, if we had existed for a number of years and we had the process sorted out, um, what you describe would be true, and we could then, at least in my thinking, we could turn our attention to outreach and communication. Um, and I think we'd be a fair amount of things we could do there. Um, we, we've just participated in an outreach to the student community, and I would think outreach would be something that this committee could uh, take on uh, and pursue that. I mean, it, it can be done individually as it has been by individual counselors or groups of counselors, but uh, I could see OCA saying, okay, part of our, our charge is to uh, you know, work on uh, improving outreach, and one large category is students. Um, but there are also other groups that others have been trying to reach out. So th I think there are things that OCA could and should be doing, but it hasn't been, not because it, they uh, don't need to be done, it's because we've been consumed by appointments. And you're right, once that gets settled, assuming it does get settled, um, I would say we should turn our attentions to outreach and communication. Now, communication is another thing that we really need to spend some thoughts on, some time on. So um, again, I'm reluctant to start thinking of things for OCA to do, or GOL to do, or finance to do. I am uh, concerned about low, lessening the workload of CRC. I'm also hearing that maybe an option is to cut uh, council memberships to three instead of five, but it does seem like uh, creating some kind of uh, another body, a uh, full council com uh, committee, to take uh, some of the burden from CRC might be the way to go. I'm, I'm a little reluctant to start thinking about how we can change GOL or OCA to take on some of these things. Um, anyway, sure, please, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, go ahead. Where I was gonna end with this, right. and this is 100% an idea for discussion, right. not fully thought through, but appointments in many ways are about the organization of the town, right? And considering that we've talked about having committees review their charge and we might be re eliminating some committees, there is a thought that perhaps instead of GOL taking on sort of bylaw reviews, GOL could take on appointments because that sort of fits into organization and governance. And then OCA could retain its outreach and communications aspect, but perhaps take something that fits from CRC, it'd be a pretty dramatic and radical change, yeah. and maybe after yeah. a year the council isn't ready for that. I but, but I would say that the reason we paired, we put appointments into OCA was the idea that um, outreach and appointments should be paired together because part of the outreach would be about getting people to serve on committees. I think we haven't really seen that materialize, and I, and I don't think that we actually will. I think the CPOs are very focused on getting people mm -hmm. to sign up for committee appointments, but OCA, and, and in fact, when we had a subcommittee role, that didn't seem to be what we felt like was the role, was to get to recruit people, um, except for maybe the town council appointments. And so there could be a thought that appointments actually sit more logically in GOL within our revised uh, second bullet on advice the town councils on matters of town governance and organization, since that is town governance and organization, and that would free up substantial space in OCA for them to maintain outreach and communications, but maybe take something like public ways or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just an idea to throw out. No. So, so it was, as Evan was talking, one of the things that popped into my mind of could appointments go to GOL, but, but here's another, again, radical thing as we're just talking about restructuring everything is if OCA goes down to three, if GOL goes down to three, you've in theory freed up four members from committee assignments. It might give enough space to, not that we wanted to discuss this, to put a fifth standing committee or what would be a sixth standing committee in that could some, if we could figure out a way to split CRC that could then take some of that um, as another potential Again, going back to as I was just thinking, the 
when, you know, about the question is what does CRC or some other committee get measure-wise referral, not what can they talk about relating to that referral, you know, and, and I think we've been thinking it more as what can you talk about relating to that referral. Well, downtown parking was referred to CRC and it has to stay in CRC because um, it involves all this other stuff, so that's where it had to be. But whoever, whatever committee gets downtown parking study can still discuss all of the impacts throughout town, including of housing and this and that, even if the housing measures don't go to that committee. Um, to give an example, the transportation speed limits. There's no necessarily reason why that has to be in CRC as a specific proposal. It could be in GOL, it could be in communications, it could be in some other committee. The discussion around whether to adopt them will still be comprehensive. It's just who gets that measure? Not, oh, because they don't get housing measures, they can't discuss how that speed limit affects housing. They can still discuss how it affects housing, it's just figuring out where that measure goes. For me, the most important thing is that somebody actually bring something to the council to act on. Discussion is great, and, but I don't, you know, and you have to have discussion, but the real task, it seems to me, of these bodies is to bring something to the council that's been fully formed and vetted and shaped and say, here's what we think the council should do about downtown parking or speed limits or uh, whatever the issue is, housing priorities, transportation plan, master plan, whatever. It comes to the council um, with a actual proposal. And if a committee isn't doing that and it, it, because it's just overburdened, um, it's, been, it's got too much on its plate, it just can't, right, it can't deal with all this, so nothing gets to us, or it gets to us in some kind of, you know, uh, incohate, confused form, um, then, then it's a failure. The whole thing is a failure. The purpose of these bodies is to, bring, is to do the, the, the work and bring it to the council for action. Um, and that's why I'm worried about CRC. Um, we on GOL and OCA, bring things to the council, fully formed and vetted, and the council then makes up their minds. We do our job on those two bodies, and I would say finance as well. And this is not a criticism of CRC at all, um, but there are a whole host of issues that they're being asked to um, deal with where what I want from them is concrete proposals. I don't want discussion. I, I, obviously, they have discussion. They can talk to it, right? But in the end, they're supposed to create something and give it to us, and, and then we decide if we think we should do it or not. Um, and that's what I'm worried about with CRC. Um, and where else these things get discussed, or by whom, or whatever it doesn't, I don't care at all. Um, I want CRC to come to me on the council with specific uh, recommendations about master plan or zoning or about housing priorities or uh, you know uh, speed limits, uh, whatever it is, and um, that's what I measured their success by. Um, any committee success by. So if GOL and OCA are just not getting stuff to the council, there's a problem, but they are. CRC has a problem, and it's not it's not anyone's fault. It's just the right. So what can we do to help them? do their job? What can we do to help them um, send things to the council for the council to act on? That's my concern. And um, what we're hearing today, if I can summarize it and, and fairly, is a, a broader discussion, appropriately, I think, of, of, of overall committee structure and, and, and the tasks for each committee. We've had a number of radical suggestions that I think we should come back to. Um, we're not going to obviously resolve them today. I think it would be helpful to hear from our other two committee members as well um, to get five uh, thoughts or five voices in this conversation. Um, but um, <sighs> sure, please, Mandy. Don't. So, food for thought. Um, we haven't talked about finance, and I just um, go back to, and, and this was just a thought that came to me. 
I think we need to talk about finance. Um, as many people say, well, everything has a financial component, so everything has to go to finance for that evaluation. But with what I was just saying about it doesn't matter what that evaluation has, it's where that evaluation happens. Um, we were talking about these priority recommendations from Downtown Parking Working Group today in CRC, and we said, well, pretty much everything we're talking about has a financial implication. Are we allowed to discuss that in CRC, or does that mean we have to also send this to finance? And I think part of maybe mm. the problem with all of our work is we, as a council, have been saying, well, if it touches finance, it goes to finance along with CRC. Mm -hmm. Maybe we as a council or we as GOL need to come back with a recommendation that says we send it to one committee. And so we're going to split these things out to these particular topics into multiple committees to wherever they go. And the council's job is to determine which is the overarching, the, the most pertinent subject that that measure applies to. Is it financial? The budget is financial. That belongs in finance. But is signage the most, is the most pertinent part of a discussion on whether to recommend for downtown parking working group priorities that that be a real concrete, we need to deal with parking signs, is that discussion much more pertinent to tr um, public ways? Or is that much more pertinent to economic development? Or is that the most thing to finances? Because if we, because it could go, it, it's got a financial component to it, but does that mean it has to go to finance too? Um, and so maybe being clear about how something gets set and just because it touches on financial matters doesn't mean it has to go to finance, just because it touches on economic development doesn't mean it has to go to CRC. It's what its main proposal relates to and the discussion then around those recommendations will touch on everything, but it doesn't have to be in four committees. It can be in one, and so that maybe that means actually modifying the finance committee charge to not include everything related to financial matters. Maybe it's only specific things, not anything that might have a cost to it. Um, and that we empower our other committees to actually be able to discuss the potential costs of a proposal and whether that, how that relates into something as just food for thought as we, I assume, are going to continue this discussion at another well, time. Well, I want to I bring it to a, yeah. a stop um, and because we have a number of things we should do. Um, but, so I need just quickly a sense of what we want to do next time when we come back and what I should be thinking about in terms of shaping the discussion. And um, I mean, you can also send me these, these suggestions, uh, you know, individually at, at a later point of how you would like this discussion to proceed. But uh, we have spent a fair amount of time um, not really looking at the specific charge, though we have talked a little bit about it, um, and we've discussed, you know, to what degree we should be tinkering it or not. But we spend most of our time, it seems, dealing with the larger issue of overall committee structure um, and, and what would be the best ways to what suggestions we could make as a committee to the council about restructuring or redesigning um, some of these committees and or creating a new body. I'm leaning towards a new body, um, but um, it's clearly a discussion we need to continue. So is that a fair sense that the next time we come back, the next meeting, we will revisit this, And but I'd like uh, everyone to think about it and maybe uh, have some concrete suggestions to present. I certainly will give some thought to this. Um, but right now, the focus seems to be on overall um, committee structure and recommendations, potential recommendations to the council about how to restructure um, or reorganize some or all of these committees. Now, that's a huge uh, undertaking and a huge uh, change, and I have some great reservations about that at this point in the committee, in the council's life, but that's where we are at the moment. We're not talking about the, the, the nitty gritties of, of, of a particular charge. We're talking about the larger structure of, of, of things and considering some potentially major changes or at least wanting to talk some more about it. I get the sense you certainly want to talk some more about it. So I think that uh, I'm feeling uh, opposite George today in a lot of ways. That's fine. Because I actually think 
you, you don't want to, it sounds from what I heard, you're hesitant to make some major changes yes, this early in the council, whereas actually my thought is early in the council's life is the time to make some major changes because we just completed the first year and the vast majority of us had no idea what we were doing. Right. And um, so I think in the same way that OCA developed a process and said, let's try this out, and then we said, oh, that didn't work, and now we're making a fairly radical change to that process. I think it's okay if after the first year we say, so we tried something out, here's where it worked, here's where it didn't, and we should be able to make some big changes. Um, I think also given our three-year term, we have some luxury in, in having a first year that was sort of a learning curve and mm -hmm. an experiment year in many ways, that it's fine if we sort of say, Okay, let's 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 make some big changes based on what we saw, because future counselors who have two-year terms might not have that same luxury of being able to make some of these big changes. Whereas I think a big thing of what we're doing as the first counselors are, is setting up this structure. Uh, I think we have probably talked this a bit to death. Right. I have in my mind a couple ideas that I would need to sit and think on yes. and flesh out, and maybe even bring in like. Here's what I would have as the committees and their charges, and we could each do that and um, and and do that. But I, I'd be willing to move on now. Uh, I do think finance is something that we hadn't talked about, and and we should, because I might actually even think the opposite of Mandy Joe, which is I've been uncomfortable with finances. What I think uh, finance committees, what I feel has been an overly broad view of their charge. Mm -hmm. In my mind, finances municipal revenues, municipal expenditures, end of list. And when I've seen some of the conversations finance has had about 132 Northampton Road, about the housing priorities policies, mm -hmm. they seem like they're considering broader economics, yeah, broader. which to me is way outside of their charge and has made me, I personally, I mean, I think if you went to a finance major and said, so you, you study economics, they'd be like, no, I study finance. Like, they're two very different things. Mm -hmm. And so finance committee seems to be under this impression that if it involves money at all, it's finance committee, but I actually it's want everything. a very narrow appropriations and revenues end of list. And so I, I think that we should um, talk more about finance next time because I don't think that's important. Um, the last thing I'll say is uh, I did not have a chance to talk to Oka about any of this, as George knows since he's on Oka. Right. Um, my intent is to have a, put it on the December 2nd agenda. Okay. Um, so I should hopefully be able to bring to our next meeting some sense of where OCA stands on this. But that hasn't happened yet. All right. Uh, all I would say is I actually, I might not have been clear, but I think finance has been taking an overly broad. And so my other example would be percent for art. I'm not sure what CRC will discuss in percent for art because it's all about finance. And so I think it probably doesn't really belong, the more I think about it, I'm like, what am I gonna, how am I not gonna talk about finance in Percent for Art in CRC? So maybe that one should only be in finance because it really is municipal finance and it does on some other stuff, but they can handle that other stuff and does it really need to be in two committees? So I think that's, that. I, I've also got ideas and I'm ready to like, blow up some charges and just come in with a all whole right. set of different well, things. Okay. So I don't know what, but I think we do need I'm to hear not, about, the, happy about, any of this, about the other I, committees I too. I'm gonna charge you both with uh, come up, coming up with your revolutionary plans, <laughs> but uh, don't obviously send them to each other, but uh, you can send them to me. Um, and, uh, but I'm also hearing, uh, just to sum up, that CRC is, is a real issue and trying to figure out how to, un to share the workload um, but also hearing the, the concern about the finance charge as being uh, too broad. And uh, so those two are on my mind, at least the role of CRC, how to lessen the workload, and the issue of the finance charge being too broad. And then suggestions about, uh, and just put, you put on your thinking caps, and we will continue this discussion next time. And uh, so I'm going to, that's number, item number two. Um, I'm going to skip item number three. I'd like to just briefly say something, or have some input for you from you about what role, if any, GOL plays in the future given bylaw review committee report to the council. And here I just need guidance and uh, um, basically we just sit back. Our t we have no role unless something is sent to us by the council. Um, uh, help me here, Mandy. So 
I think this committee, while I was chair, already voted that the proposals themselves don't need to come to GOL prior to being acted on by the council. Right. So that would be the whole revision of the entire bylaw. Um, I think you're matter. asking about maybe the future right. considerations Definitely list. Yes. Um, I think it Shouldn't could come, it, to us. Come, to it, us, come to us. I think right. it would come to us, and then maybe we can dole it out as things that we should, as GOL, deal with, and things that maybe should be dealt with by others. Can the chair be proactive in the sense that, um, or can this committee be proactive in the sense that it begin to look at some of these suggested changes and begins to think about what we might do or not do, or is that overstepping our authority? In other words, these things come. In other words, doesn't isn't there a whole host of suggestions? And I mean, that document is one I have not. I will confess this publicly. I have not read with great attention or care. I'm sorry, but um, it, it's clear that they have a number of suggestions that they are making. And it would seem that that would come to us. Can, should we begin to look at that uh, on our own and begin to think about how we might tackle it? Or should we just wait until what? I and mean, what are we supposed to do with it, if anything? Any thoughts ever? I have lots of thoughts, always. Good, I think. So it, this, I saw this on the agenda, but also had intended to talk about this in some respect um, in the context of potential revisions to the GOL charge. Right. I think that. Um, our charge right now, pre of course, which I just closed out of, um, fairly narrowly limits our interaction with bylaws to yeah. just a review of proposed bylaws to be clear, consistent, and actionable. Right. Um, as I've served for the past 10, 11 months on bylaw review committee, there have been a number of bylaws that we have encountered uh, decided they need sub needed some type of substantive revision. Right. Um, decided it was beyond really the scope of the bylaw review committee and are punting it to the council. Some of those very logically fall into perhaps CRC. Um, others of them, and I think I mentioned this at our last meeting, um, really don't logically fall into a committee. And so I think bylaw, the bylaw review committee has been working under the assumption that individual counselors will pick up this list and say, I have a roadmap to some cha substantive changes in the bylaws, let me go do that. I have always felt that that was an overly optimistic view of bylaw review committee yes. for two reasons. One, there are a number of them and our counselors are already in many ways overworked and two, a lot of them are very boring, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, counselors want to put their mark on something that's exciting, right? And so some of these are just really, they were too substantive for bylaw review, but really, I can't picture a counselor looking at them and going, that's what I, I want to work with on, this. Right? right? And so I think I mentioned some to this committee last time, although I talk about this all the time, so who knows who I've talked about it to. But for instance, both the plastic bag ban and the styrofoam ban, ban have a deferment procedure. Right. They're different. What, that doesn't make any sense because the same venues that might be, the, similar venues might be impacted and they both are run by the Board of Health and they're both about banning a product and yet they have completely different language for deferment. Those should be the same. Um, so why can't this committee right. uh, begin to go through that and pick out the really boring ones so and maybe even some not so boring It ones. would exceed and our current charge. And so yeah. who's gonna, you know, so we'll go ahead and do it anyway. And so what, you know, what are you gonna well, throw I, us in I, prison? This is something that I never thought I'd hear and from George. Throw us in prison? I mean, come on. Um, um, no, I, I think I, I agree. Somebody's gotta take it, this it, on, It right? seems to naturally sit with GOL, as I argued about the downtown parking. If you don't refer it to someone, it dies. And we don't want this future considerations thing to die, so I think it needs to be maybe somewhere GOL makes the most sense. So maybe ask to get a referral item on the agenda so that even though it's not part of our charge, it's been referred now. Um, they are sort of bylaw changes, so then it would kind of, but I think that goes into looking at charges and saying, you know, maybe bylaw review, uh, GOL should be able to do this not on referral, but on its own, there will be the charter requires bylaw, there be a bylaw review commission every 10 years. This is sort of the start. It won't happen again for another 
I don't know how long, and then Not in my the lifetime. charter. But you know, um, but in the in the interim of that, maybe that should just sort of, as with the town council rules, sit with GOL, and so we should approach the president create a charge that her, does that. Ask her for a, to a referral of this uh, whole package of things to us explicitly. Is that just the future considerations? Future considerations is the term I should use. And so what we're asking for, I'm suggesting we ask for a referral from the council um, to review um, with the thought of making concrete uh, uh, proposals to the council of the future considerations, uh, what do you want to call it, the future, future considerations. That's all there is. All right, fine. I, I would, I, I'm concerned that this is just gonna, nothing's gonna happen with it. I hear what Evan's saying. It seems like something we should be doing anyway. Um, that's why I put it on the agenda. And what I'm hearing from the two of you is that you're okay if I go to Lynn and say at a next meeting, ideally, or at some future meeting soon, uh, we're asking for a referral of future considerations from the bylaw committee report. And I think that there are some, and I haven't gone through these finally, but I think that there are probably some that we could justify under clear, consistent, and actionable. So there's a couple that have been flagged because they we really feel like we just need further attorney review of them because we have some uh, potential constitutional concerns. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few, you could argue that having two different deferment processes for similar bylaws operate is is not consistent. And so I do think that to some extent we could we could take some of these up under our current charge, but there are also certainly others that I think. So if we get a referral, just carte blanche I would say go for it we'd pro okay. and we'd, we'd just go for it and, and I think I many of them we yeah. could justify but there are others that Fine. we couldn't but that could also Good. influence how we prioritize right okay so I will do that with your uh, permission um, and hopefully it'll be on the next agenda it should only take a few minutes <laughs> um, I'm gonna skip five that is uh, relevant to other things right fair enough I'm just gonna leave and that already it. exactly right it's um, we could just say it's been discussed, five has been discussed. Um, do you want to take a quick look or do you, we could come back to this? I did go through and revise the 2020 schedule with the advice of, of, of basically adding two <laughs> days to the council schedule and so you should find in your packet a revised 2020 schedule and maybe the thought here is just, you know, it's there um, when you get a moment, uh, if you haven't had a chance, look it over and uh, maybe the next meeting we can finally just, uh, uh, you know, decide on it. Um, we could also take a moment now, um, but it's really up to you. We have no public comments, so number seven, we do not have to worry about. Um, what's your thought on the schedule? Do you wanna take a look at it now? Do you wanna, I mean, or take it home and with your calendars in front of you? Um, I also put the council schedule on the, in the packet, and I think I actually have a physical copy of it here if anyone wants it. Um, and you should find, if I did it right, that every um, GOL meeting is two days after. So Jan the first one, I believe, is January 8th. Is that the first GOL meeting? Right. And then pretty much all the way through. Um, a couple of places I had to make some changes. Um, but um, if you want to take a moment, if you see anything outstanding, um, we're meeting twice every month at the moment, that could change, I understand, but if we follow a twice a month schedule um, and with the meetings uh, coming after the council meetings that are scheduled at the moment, this is what it looks like. And I can't swear I didn't make a mistake here, but that's, so, yes, go right ahead. Um, it, it lists one July and one August meeting. Um, I think oh, that's, that's right. because that's the council has right. one July meeting and two very late August meetings, one yes. of which is practically September. Right. Um, the August 30th becomes September 2nd in terms of two days after. Right. Um, so I, I'm looking at my draft CRC meeting schedule, which I did before I looked at this draft from you, this revised draft from you, right. and we agree on all dates except those two that are missing in July and August, one for each of those. Um, that I have a draft proposed schedule of July 1 and August 5 also meeting. Um, mm -hmm. In that sense, I have not compared my schedule to holidays yet. 
but um, I believe November 25th is the day before Thanksgiving. And so the three that in my draft CRC schedule don't agree with yours is when I went off the town council schedule mm -hmm. um, because the town council schedule didn't, the, either there were multiple weeks between a town, more than two weeks between town council schedules. So I had drafted November 4, November 18, and December 2 um, as mm -hmm. potential. November 11th is going to be Veterans Day, so that's a holiday. Right. Um, on on your draft schedule, um, so do I have I, November 11th on mine? You do, oh, you do. So I think that's good. why I moved to November 4 um, for CRC's draft because the 11th is a holiday. Um, so I would recommend we add July 1 and August 5. We can always cancel if we don't have stuff to do, um, but just to put them on the schedule, change November 11th to November 4. And then I think inst and since the 25th is the day before Thanksgiving, I moved to November 18th. So November 4 and November 18 instead of November 11 and November 25. Thank you. Um, and then I chose December 2nd instead of December 9th, even though it's before the council meeting instead of after. Um, it the allows reason, reasoning there. Um, no, meeting, no committee meetings not two weeks in a row because December 16th is the next week. Um, so just to spread out the committee meetings to every other week instead of having two in a row. It's one where the council meetings are two in a row. Um, and so that, that was my other reason for taking December 2nd over December 9th. Um, so those would be my three changes. So you, November 11 to November 4, November, November 25 to November 18, and December 9 to, to December, December 2nd, 2. and then add July 1 and August 5. And what about meeting twice in the dog days? Well, I, I, I always hedge with schedule them and hope we can cancel. So add, you would suggest adding July 1 and August 5. Um, with the hopes that maybe they're we, not needed. We, we won't need them. Okay. Any thoughts, Evan? I hadn't looked at this, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm sorry? I, if I'm being honest, I didn't look at this until Well, that's all right. Then what I'm right now, suggest but is I will revise. I right now, with them next to each other. That sounds, I think that sounds I'll make a, I'll fine. put this up as a right. revised document, and if you get a chance to look at it again. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. And um, I, I like the idea of, having some placeholder dates in July and August, Just but perhaps case. with the expectation that we probably will. I love canceling <laughs> meetings in the summer, um, but also the nature of my schedule is if you, we don't put at least a placeholder in for if needed, mm -hmm. I'm, something else is gonna end up getting scheduled there. Okay, all right, so, uh, no, no, it's, uh, you must say yes to your life, folks. All right, so discussion review, item number six, I will revise it and I will put it up in our packet um, and hopefully next time we meet we can formally approve it, adopt it. There's no public comment. Um, we have two, we have the November 6 minutes. I put actually the uh, track change version and the clean copy in there um, because there were a fair number of track changes that Athena had to make and we're hoping that, um, that eventually this process will become routine for everybody. Um, but I wanted you to see it. Um, um, so, again, I don't know that anyone's had a chance to look at it because I put it in there, I think, late last night. So I'm perfectly happy to leave it until the next meeting. That would be nice. Fine. I have not looked at them. That's fine. So I'm just going to uh, pass over adoption of November 6 minutes. But I would urge you, when you do look at them, to look at both the clean copy and the track changes um, because Athena had to make a fair number. Um, I want to go to an item 10, and if we have time, we'll discuss about it. I mean, we've had a pretty good discussion already about future agenda items. Um, item 10, not anticipated, and the first is the Rules of Procedure 10.9 uh, revisions, and that's in your packet. And based on our discussion at the council meeting, I went ahead and made some changes to that uh, document, um, and I wanted you to look at them. Um, I think there should be track changes, uh, hopefully. I they tried. showed tracked from the clean version that was presented. So you accepted all the changes yeah. from the original rule and tracked your new ones? That's what I believe, okay. yes, I did. So um, the only changes I made were, well, you see them. So, and I wanted especially, well, I want your input on all of them, and, um, but particularly the preamble where we suggested that we take um, some of the, the comments in the report and put them at the head of, the, of this and 
having done that, I felt like I could strike at least part of what was down below based on what was in the preamble. Um, so anyway, take a moment, look at it, and um, we can also come, I believe we meet again before mm -hmm. the next council meeting. Before the December 16 one will right, be taken we do, up again. We do yeah. meet again. So, um, right. So there's not a super rush here, but I'm learning that if you do something right away, you t try to teach me this, Randy, but. So I have one minor that has nothing to do with what you proposed, but it That's is now actually 10.8, not 10.9, given yeah. our passage on Monday night. So when <laughs> so I present this to it, the We just have to change the title to 10.8. Sorry, oh, this is item, um, this is R rules of procedure, I'm sorry. I, I think it's titled ROP 10.9 Liaisons Ryan Revisions. Yes. And now all of a sudden my computer's bad again. Yes. Thank you for, thank you for doing this. Well, yeah, this uh, looks, this looks good. It looks okay. I, I mean, I couldn't. I with Andy, I wasn't. It felt like the change I made in that one item, and I, again, I'm doing this blind because my machine is not working. Uh, Andy had suggested adding something to uh, one of the lines, and I did add it. But I, when I read it, I thought, is this really saying anything new? And so that's the one revision I would like your input on. You're talking or maybe about I misread or misunderstood Andy's point. You're I, talking I, about and are not to speak on behalf of the council. Exactly. That's what I remember him saying, but I wasn't completely confident in my notes. And I'm wondering whether that is necessary um, or whether he said something slightly different and I didn't catch it. Um, so, and I, eventually it, we'll find out at the council meeting. I meant to ask him at the meeting last night, but for some reason it was 11.30, and <laughs> time flies in the United States. So the, another just consistency Same thing, and country. I don't know how we didn't miss, m m right. catch this the first time. What is? Our outline structure is start with A, B, and C, little A, B, and C, not one, two, three after the rule number. The rule numbers say 2.1, and then it's 2.1A, not 2.11. I don't know how we missed this, but on Monday night I was like, wait a second, did we really do 2.1, you know, 3 point, or whatever this one is, 10.91? Is that really accurate? So it, I think we need to change all those numbers to letters for consistency purposes. Under 10.9, it should be ABC. ABC instead of 1, 2, 3, <laughs> according to the outline structure in our, how we've done the rules. I don't know how we missed that. All right, that's okay. So. <laughs> We're changing the rule to 10.8, and we're changing the numbers to, to letters. To letters. Okay, that's all right. That's why we do this. Um, someday we'll get it right. Um, so I, item three is now set, item two is broken into two, so liaisons may not participate remotely. Um, item five, uh, item six now becomes and are not to speak on behalf of the council, which I believe captures Andy's point. Um, number eight, I felt striking that sentence because of the preamble. Mm -hmm. And s again, it's, uh, and the only other, uh, other than the preamble, if you have any thoughts on that, was whether we want to reorder these in any way. Um, uh, I don't think it necessarily needs it, but. getting the shells and the shell not separated. I mean, you could do that, I guess, um, just so it reads. And I don't know what to do about, um, it is somewhat, uh, what? It, what will Thou we shall see? Not. Should it be shall not instead of may not participate I remotely? I wondered about that. I don't know. 
I mean, we've tried to get rid of all the maze to wills and right. whatever. We've tried to use like will and well, shall and uh, I don't know, but. So may I mean, is used in number two for may ask questions. Right. Could be can, but are we trying to say they we're saying cannot three, you or cannot. shall not? They cannot. Um, they, they, they are absolutely prohibited from, which is probably what the state law is. Right, so it should be shall. I right. think it should be shall. So three should be shall. Okay. So, um, I mean, we make shells and shell knots, but um, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know. The function of a liaison is to serve as a link between the council and the multiple member body to which they are assigned. They are there to observe, share information, answer questions to the degree they can and make sure that the council is kept apprised of the work of the body to which they are liaison. They are not there to advocate or promote a particular policy or course of action. Okay, all right. I felt that was kind of what Andy wanted and captured it and so. All right, I will go back then and make these um, sort of uh, small changes. Uh, number three, uh, change the numbering and change numbers to letters but I'm not hearing any particular, I mean, again, you can always reach out to me, but any particular um, issues with it. And we will have one more chance to look at this if we wish. And the proposed motion to the, um, yeah. for the council to make is a rescind and replace, right? So you'll be able to craft that language based on the 10.4 language we had. Right, so I will use, right. use 10.4 and, um, is it appropriate to include that in the packet for us to look at, or is it more of something? It, it needs sent to Athena so she can right put now. it in the motion sheet. Right, but I'm also just thinking if I run by the two of you, we could make sure it's right. Well, <laughs> she'll, um, she'll, get she'll, she'll forward the, I, the president and vice president and Alyssa actually get the motion sheet ahead of time so that not. we can attempt to review it for right. changes. So, so, good. so yeah. I will just do that. I will create the proposed motion using 10.4. It's a rescind and replace. Good. Anything else related to um, 10.9? Do we need a formal vote on these changes so that you can report to the council that this body approved? Um, I them? would, I would, but I prefer that we do that when you see the final. Oh, okay. Thing. No, I, that's we could certainly do it, um, but let's leave it for the next meeting. But you're right, we need a vote. It's always nice to be able to say we actually voted on this as opposed to. Ryan just put it in there because he felt like it. Um, the second item I have under items not anticipated um, kind of came out of the, uh, and maybe it's not appropriate and you can tell me, but it came out of the discussion at the council the, uh, the other night with um, uh, the parking uh, on Lincoln and the issue of process and the fact that there is no process. And I've actually now been sort of whiplashed um, by this because I was told that initially I said it goes to TAC. Then I was told by the manager, well, you're keepers of the public way, so it goes to you. And now it's been <laughs> it's back to TAC. So the question for me is do, don't, do we have a role here in terms of just as GOL with process and procedure? And could we take on, or should we take on, the task of just figuring out the process or procedure and then presenting that? Because the president is not certain, the manager is clearly that clear. Um, is this the kind of thing that, that falls within our purview um, to, to suggest a process for this sort of thing? And we take it on and then send it, uh, or is that we're just gonna see what falls out? which at the moment is all over the map. So public way requests is what I'm asking. Uh, isn't that, I mean, how they are, how the process or procedure is to be managed. Not the content of it, 
but just the process. So if you are a resident and you want, uh, you have an issue about parking on your street, here's the procedural process you follow. Right now there is none. Um, or if there is, I just don't know where it is. But apparently I'm not the only one. Um, so that was the question. And I, I'm putting it here because it came up just at the council meeting. And so I felt it was appropriate to, to add it. Um, and maybe we'll come back to it next meeting, but I just, as I was listening to this thing bounce all over the place, I thought what the president needs is just someone to figure out a process that she can then say this is the process. She can't do it, she doesn't have the time. Um, the manager's all over the map on it too. Any thoughts on this? Is it inappropriate, not our task, Amanda? So we are the keepers of the public way. We drafted the public way delegation policy, however you want to refer to that. Um, our charge says advise the town council on matters of town council rules, governance, and organization, and also advise the town council on matters of town governance and organization. If we draft, you know, as keepers of the public way, I think you could argue that um, governance of how that's processed could fall within our charge. Um, and then what so I wouldn't want to get into tonight is what that looks like today, is what, what, that, that, what that process looks like or what that might involve. Um, I think it becomes a also potentially, a, you could argue a potential separation of powers, but not really a separation of powers, but a do we as a council want to be, and this would when you get into process, we're the ones that are charged with changing and, well, approving all of those changes. Right. Are we going to delve into How they get to accepting it. the complaints about what they are? And again, I'm not sure that's where we are, but I think, I think given our charge, we could take it upon ourselves to say, we saw this as clearly a problem at the council, and so here's what we think a process, given that we are the keepers of the public way, could look like. That's what I'd like to, us to, to consider doing. And I would certainly alert the president to this, but um, I want to, first of all, find out whether you, you think we should be doing it, and secondly, even if we should be doing it, do you actually want to do it? Um, <laughs> those are two separate questions. Maybe it's something we should do, but we just don't want to take it up. Any thoughts at all? It's clear yes. you don't have to have any. So that debate happened very late at night. Yes. And I was uh, finding it hard to follow and think through at that time. Mm -hmm. um, but the two takeaways I left with were, one, this was a, not a, re it, yeah, it's a public ways request. It, it, it different, it's not a reservation, but it is a public ways request mm -hmm. that the town manager had sort of taken control. It was a permanent, it was a request for a permanent change. I mean, it was something that very clearly falls within the purview of the council. Right. And yet it had been delegated to a committee by the town manager that many of us felt was an inappropriate committee for it to be delegated to without us being alerted. I mean, it's on their agenda today, right? Yes, I would be there tonight and at so 30, all ears. That was, to me, absolutely wild that the town manager would take a public ways request, decide to delegate it to a town committee that really has never dealt with that before and, and for it's which I think is- said it doesn't right, deal with is, it. Right, is, is, <laughs> in my, this is my personal opinion, is ill-suited to deal with that request. Yeah, wow. um, notified the council after that had happened yeah. And then it was clear that the council had no information. Many, I mean, George, you probably had heard stuff about this because oh, I know full of, about it's it, a new yeah. district. I had heard a little bit about right. it because I do have one block of Lincoln. Right. Um, and so I've heard from some people, but when I left, um, Councillor Val Milne went, where is this, what is going on? And I thought, <laughs> right, not all councillors know about this issue. And so the fact that the process was moving forward without the council being apprised of what was going on, I think was really problematic. And so I, I do think as people who, as, as, as the body that wrote the public ways 
uh, policy, that policy was a very basic one that basically said, we're going to delegate some responsibility. It didn't deal with process. But what, what I think you're saying is, given this, what just happened, perhaps that policy needs to be more detailed and outline some actual process. And I do think we have some, I mean, we did advise on um, zoning bylaw change hearings, right? That mm -hmm. we said, CR, we're gonna delegate that to CRC and they could, so we, we have done something because it would also involve a hearing. I do think it, it makes sense. But I think that um, anything that involves the separation of power between the town manager and the council, uh, advice on that rightly sits in this committee. I mean, some public ways requests go to him because of the way that things are structured, and some come to us. So part of the problem might be we're trying to create a public ways policy, but I guess the point is we're making it a policy for those matters which come before the council. And we're not, you know, how he deals with public ways policies um, that come to him is his business, but this one does come to us, and there's complete confusion as to what the policy is. Um, and I'd like us to, to spend a little bit of time maybe, and I will give some thought to this myself, as to what a uh, reasonable policy might be um, for those public ways requests that come to the council. I mean, just again, concretely, I have constituents come to me and they just wanna know what they're supposed to do. And the first thing I said was go to TAC. Um, knowing full well that that probably wasn't going to, but that's what I thought it should be. Then I was told explicitly, no, TAC doesn't do that. Um, it, you're the keeper of the public way. So I said, okay, we're going to need to create a process to the constituents. Now it's back to TAC. It may go to CRC and da 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 da. So, um, yeah. I, I, I'm just going to mention again, as I did last night, uh, Monday night, that right. uh, I, as CRC chair, since he saw it within CRC's charge, the actual hear, you know, the actual okay. sort of discussion yeah. on the policy of the change, not necessarily on how to get there, mm -hmm. um, asked me and I, I recommended that he get a TAC opinion before coming sure. to the council sure. for his own, you know, as part of the council packet of here's what we're proposing. But I think that's in, in reflecting on the discussion and what our role is and some things that were said here and some things that were said there, that may have been a and likely was a very bad advice. Um, but yeah, I think we have to find out, you know, there's this how do, where, I think we need clarity on where requests go because we've delegated the dealing with the requests to the executive. Mm -hmm. In theory though, we don't even see most of them. Anything, you right. know, the, the request for parking you know, has, you know, a parking reservation for one day, we never see until it's been either granted or not granted. We, even when we were granting them, we didn't see it until it was on our agenda. Um, even though we are the keeper of the public way, and in theory, they maybe all should start with us. Um, not that we want them to start with us, maybe, but, you know, and so maybe a, a clarity on the policy of depending on what the request is, here's where you go if you're looking for a short-term reservation. This is where you start with your request. But if you're looking for a permanent change, your request starts here, not there. You know, and, and that's something that maybe GOL needs to deal with to clarify, not just for the residents, but also for our own sake and the executive's sake, that if they get a complaint from a resident on parking on Lincoln is horrible or parking on whatever street is horrible, mm -hmm. we want changes to that. Um, the staff can say, that's a permanent change. You need to send that request to X, not Y. And that's, I think, what we can deal with. So I just, uh, we're near the end here. I just need um, advice on how, if and how I should proceed with this. Um, have a conversation with Paul about it. Have, give a heads up to Lynn uh, just to see what their thoughts are before I put it on the next agenda. Because there, there could be, I mean, Paul may very well feel like this is, um, you know, you. A, you're opening up a hornet's nest here, 
Um, the vast majority of these things come to town hall and we deal with them. And there are these more permanent things that also come to town hall, but ultimately are your authority. Um, so if you start crafting a policy for just that, um, it's, it, so he would certainly, I think, want to have some, some uh, input into this. And so maybe before I start launching into some, or we start launching into some kind of elaborate discussion, I should at least reach out to Lynn and Paul, telling Lynn we're thinking of trying to craft something that we could bring to you, and, and telling Paul, um, you know, could we talk briefly about this and whether you have some, you know, do you just have practical, serious considerations or concerns that, that should just rule this out for the moment, or are you open to us trying to come up with a procedure that um, we deal with uh, these kinds of long-term uh, issues? Evan. So I'm going to be probably the minority voice and say no. Don't do either. Um, I think it's within the purview of this committee to look at the governance of the council and how the council operates. And uh, one of those things is public ways request, which we have delegated to Paul, but I don't want to go to Paul and say, so we're thinking about doing something that's in our right to do. What do you, wouldn't you think? Well, it's, ju it's just, Evan, that, that so much of this comes to him anyway, and he deals with it all the time. And I think part of the reason that he's kind of caught betwixt and between, because it involves staff, it involves, you know, he is right that, that parking is something that it has multiple impacts, and um, I guess just as a matter of just uh, being politic, if nothing else, I'd like him to be apprised of what we're thinking. And I'd also value his input, because he might just say, look, you're opening up a can of worms that we just don't want to get into right now. Um, but uh, you're thinking, I mean, if we go off and do what we're going to do, and uh, assuming we create something, and then we come back and say, OK, here it is, um, I, I'd prefer that he be aware of it before we start. Uh, uh, Andy? So I think you should talk to the president. Um, because she might decide it's an agenda item. She might decide other things. Um, she might say, we don't need to see it on agenda. I think you should talk to the president. Okay. If we're going to put it on an agenda, which I think we have every right to, because it wasn't advise on referral, it's just advise. So I think we have every right to put it on agenda. Okay. I think then okay. similar to what we did with the original public ways policy is we talked amongst ourselves. We came up with something. We sent it to Paul for feedback. Um, because okay. it does involve the executive, and I see this, whatever it might show up, probably does involve some executive issues, and then that's how he can provide his feedback to us. Okay. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is I, to me, it's a conversation that happens here first, and then Paul gets brought in. Okay. It doesn't start with Paul. Okay. And if he says okay. that's a hornet's nest, I don't necessarily, that means we shouldn't no. do it, right? And I don't want him to dissuade us and us not to no, do it. No, no, I'm just, okay. I know so I will, I will go to Lynn. I will not go to Paul. And I will see what Lynn thinks. But it sounds like I can put this on the next agenda uh, procedure uh, with public way requests, particularly related to parking. Is that something that we can put on our agenda? Is that, or no? Go ahead. I have a guy in here we're wrapping up, and there's a couple things I did want to just mention. Okay. Uh, it, my one thing is, this isn't going to probably change for this first request maybe i don't know um but i'm wondering if does it need to be on the next agenda i think we really need to make huge headway through this town organization thing because right, right. uh, i think lynn probably expects to start having that conversation on the 16th so i'd almost be hesitant to put anything that's not that on that agenda but maybe we'll get you can always put it on I can put it on and, we'll and we can skip right. it okay um there, there are two other things i did kind of want to bring to this committee's attention I, on uh, as future agenda so um, one of them going on the theme of separation of powers and making it clear to people. Um, one sort of confusing thing that's been happening from an OCA standpoint, um, but I think the discussion might more logically fit in GOL, is so we've had three resignations, mm -hmm. um, two on ZBA and one on planning board. Um, those are both town council appointed bodies. Those resignations have both been, have all been submitted to the town manager Mm -hmm. um, and in and in many ways that makes sense. In other ways, it makes zero sense because he is not the appointing authority. Right. And so we have, in, in, so in one case, it went to the staff liaison, and then that staff liaison sent it to the town manager, mm -hmm. and then that town manager sent it to me as chair of OCA. And that's not the process that it should be. Mm -hmm. And but I don't blame anyone because if you're just on a body, who you you, you you've probably never even met the council, so you're probably going to go to. So for instance, the planning board resignation went to. Uh, Chris Brestrup um, and and 
to Paul, and then so, uh, we uh, found uh, out because uh, it was sent to me and the uh, president. And so I think there's something to be said about, I, I don't even know if the council writ large knows that Mark Parent has submitted a resignation effective in March. I think most of them probably haven't, but they should because we're the appointing authority. Right. Those resignations should come to the council president as the appointing, well, the council as a whole, but through the council president right. as the appointing authority. So what is our role in this? So you I, I think there needs to be some guidance for the public about to the public Perhaps. and to the executive staff, they're yeah. forwarding it on, but they also need to then talk to the committees as a whole when they get one and say, you know, thank you for sending that to us, but the appointing authority should be the one receiving it initially. We will forward it on, but we are not the appointing authority. So it's, it's something with the staff too, and to continually reinforce that. And it goes to president that. with CC to OCA? No, town council through the president okay. would be my, to, my to sense. town council yeah. by a president. Okay. Um, and then the second thing I want to bring up, and, and George is aware of this, um, but Mandy, you're probably not, is, or maybe you are, is um, so OCA is very close to its new uh, process to appoint town council uh, appointed, you know what I mean. Um, it is very likely to be uh, public interviews. There seems to be almost no way around that. Mm -hmm. um, and it will likely occur during an OCA meeting that will not be a regularly scheduled OCA meeting. One of the things that is very important to me and to seemingly several members of the OCA committee is not to have public comment at those interviews. Mm -hmm. um, we, th there's a general feeling that it would be, in it, it, those, those meetings would have one agenda item, which would be the interview, and it would seem very inappropriate to allow people to come and comment publicly either before the interviews or right after them. My reading of our town council rules, rule 10.6H, it says committee meetings shall provide for a period of public comment. Um, it doesn't, like the charter does, distinguish regular. So there was some conversation about, well, the council, there's a differentiation between regular versus special and only regular meetings. Does that apply to council committees? And my reading of 106 H is no, it says committee meetings shall, and so that doesn't say regular committee meetings or anything like that. So there's some thought that um, we might want to edit that rule to make either, it, to do one of two things, either make it clear that only regular committee meetings require public comment, or if we're worried about that because then any committee can just be like, yeah, we're just gonna catch, have a special meeting. Um, on this, on parking, because we don't want to hear what people say, mm -hmm. um, we could revise that rule to say something like committee meetings shall provide for a period of public comment except for meetings to interview appointments or, or, or to some language that specifically exempts that. Um, and I'm only bringing this in to the, we haven't voted on this as OCA, so it might seem premature, right. but given that we would need time to discuss this as a committee and it would need two rule readings, and given that we are hopefully doing these interviews sometime in January, I'd want this rule to be in place. I would, I would not want to move forward with any public interviews without something clear that shows us that we don't have to have public comment. And maybe we can just vote to suspend the rule until we do it later, but just putting it on this, this body's radar that I think we, we will be looking, OCA will be looking for a rule change from GOL to exempt public interviews from public comment. I'd, I'd support the just changing it from committee to regular committee. Um, I think we as a council should have regular meetings and should not accept a committee that doesn't want to schedule regular meetings. And so the exception there, you know, I think that's where we'd enforce and say, no, you don't get out from public comment because you never have a regular meeting. Our committees have regular meetings. Um, and I think it's within the spirit of what the Charter Commission intended those rules to Thing to be and the requirement for public comment both at council and um, you know committee meetings or multiple member body meetings was that when they regularly meet and we know multiple member bodies don't always have a regular schedule but that they accept public comment because it's not acceptable to never have public comment and so it should be expected that it is but the council the commission only made it for regular council meetings because it recognized there would be some meetings that it wouldn't be appropriate at. And so doing the same for committee meetings would be within the spirit of what the Charter Commission was thinking. If I could just add a, a soon -ish agenda. I, for it, this. I was gonna say, if we do it December 4th, we can put it on the council agenda for the 16th. And, then we'll and the second reading would be January 6th. Yeah, yep, January 6th. We're looking at probably mid-January mid for a second reading. 
So you'd like this on the agenda for 12-4 um, okay. and, and emendation amending to rule of procedure 10.6H to insert the word regular, is that correct? And I, ho hopefully um, OCA will have adopted this on right. December 2nd, so we won't be dealing with something abstract. We'll have an actual OCA policy to, right. say, to okay. reference. Rule okay. 10.6H. 10 10 10.6H. 10 10 All right. Um, we have gone through our agenda, and um, I am prepared to declare uh, to adjourn this meeting. Um, Second. And at, unfortunately, 12.38. Thank you all.